being that I was interested in language, I look at um, the visual arts as also a, a narrative, a space for a narrative. So it's all the same to me, whether it's uh, from being in radio, TV, film, and you're talking orally about so many things, or you're in English talking about the written language, and then, or if you are in art and you create or develop a visual language. So it all kind of tied in to me. I wanted to see exactly the basis of it is how do I create a counter narrative within the arts in general? And Howard had it all uh, from every aspect from radio, TV, film to visual art, as well as um, the literary foundation of it. And because of Howard, I was able to integrate it all and create a framework for that. My freshman year, I took a painting course with James Phillips of Afrocobra, and he had a moniker for me calling me a Renaissance woman because of the way that I decided to use language and then also as an artist. So seeing myself and having, um, having the ability to look at theory, he gave me um, a sense of ownership within a visual language um, by introducing me to Afrocobra and the different ways in which he could use um, iconography, um, specifically um, from Africa to tell a story. And then I met Dr. Teresia Bush, um, an art historian, who forever changed my life by allowing me to think critically about art. She showed me that I could create a framework um, using all of those things that I've learned within um, literature. I can use those and apply those to art to actually talk about our story. So then and there, I knew that um, this was a place that I needed to be in within the arts. When I started out at Howard, because I'd already done four years of uh, a fine art studio art at Art and Design, I was a painting major. And uh, the first year at Howard, you take everything in the studio uh, area as a foundation course. I took photography and printmaking and painting and sculpture. And that was what I was planning on doing. And then one day I took an African-American art history class with an amazing woman named Dr. Tritobia Benjamin. She's now passed away, but she taught for decades at Howard and was also a prior associate dean of fine arts. Well, she showed me um, works of art by black artists I had never heard of. And I couldn't believe how excited I got learning about the artists, analyzing their artworks, um, looking at artists who I didn't know then, but who would eventually become world renowned. And one of the works of art she showed me was a painting by the artist Faith Ringgold. And that work of art blew me away. It was called uh, Die, and it was from 1967. So I was looking at it at Howard just seven years after the artist painted it. So fast forward um, 20 years later, when I decided to do, was, I was writing my dissertation, I remembered that artist in that painting and she had slowly become more famous over the years. And so I got special permission to do my dissertation on an African-American artist at an institution where they didn't teach African-American art. So I found outside readers, I met the artist, Faith Ringgold, I wrote my dissertation on her and none of that would have happened if I hadn't met her painting, Die, at Howard. And that painting is now the only painting by a non-white in the room with Picasso's Demoiselle d'Avignon at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So thank you, Howard. And also, after that class, um, I realized I was much happier as a researcher, studying art, learning about the history of black artists. This just, it thrilled me with, filled me with excitement. Painting didn't. I was a proficient painter, but I wasn't excited about it. And I had, you know, I was a natural scholar. I was, you know, a bookworm as a kid. So this art history seemed to draw me. And by the time I left Howard, uh, even though I came in as a painting major, I left as an art historian and I have never regretted it and never looked back.